Well, hello, I'm Emeril Lagasse, and welcome to The Essence of Emeril. Uh, when you mention red meat, you know, most people think of beef, and in the past five years, beef has been making a serious comeback. I mean, think about the steakhouses that are booming up all over the country. And I actually love cooking with beef, and I'm a big beef fan. So today I'm devoting the entire show on one particular cut of beef that's called flank steak. Flank is a lean cut, has no bone, and uh, it's mainly used as a classical dish, probably, I think one of the first beef dishes I probably learned to cook back in the old culinary school days, London broil. So I, I decided to do a couple of dishes today with flank steak. Uh, and this is what flank uh, also is become very popular with the southwestern craze. Uh, a lot of fajitas are done with this, this type of cut, either with flank or with another cut similar to this called skirt steak. But one of the things that um, I want to share with you, preparing simple flank steak, is it's a good idea to kind of marinate some flank steak. So what I thought I would do is show you a very, very quick, simple London broil dish with a simple marinade. Now, I got a little bit of salt, and um, I want to salt both sides of the flank steak and some fresh ground pepper. Now, when you add the pepper, you sort of want to just press some of the peppercorns, as I'm doing here, into the flank steak. And this is a great, great dish to do. You can marinate them ahead of time all kinds of ways. You can just get so creative with citrus, with different aged vinegars and flavored infused vinegars you could use, all types of herbs. And this here, uh, what I want to do now is I'm going to add some, some liquid. I've got a little red wine. Got some red wine. And then I've got some good olive oil. Some good olive oil. And I'm going to use sort of a, not really quite a 50-50 blend. It's mostly red wine and a little olive oil, and we're going to whisk, just whisk that up. And then what I'm going to do is add just a tiny bit of citrus. This is the juice of um, a half a lemon um, that I'm going to add in there, the acid. We don't want to add too much acid. The acid will, will actually cook the meat. And then I want to add some, a little bit of uh, fresh garlic right inside there and, and sort of just kind of mortar almost the, uh, the garlic a little bit, let all that flavor come out. And then what I'm going to do is just add that right on top of our London broil. Now, what you can do is, after you do that, as you can see what I've done, I actually want to make sure that the bottom is also getting marinated. And you can do this overnight, do it for at least a few hours so that you get some really good flavor in there. And then when you're ready, you take it out of the ice box. It's a great dish that you can do certainly ahead of time. And what I'm going to do with this dish is earlier I've just sort of blanched fork tender some red potatoes and uh, took them out of the water. And uh, that's what I have right here. And uh, what I'm going to do with those uh, potatoes is I'm going to season them with some fresh ground pepper and uh, of course a little bit of salt. And then what you can do with those is you just sort of toss them up, flavor them and season them a little bit. And then we'll add a little bit of oil to our potatoes as well. Now, then what you do is um, just sort of let that marinade drip off and then we'll just put it right on the grill for our London broil. Now, classic L London broil, the sauce generally served with it is a bordelaise. And a bordelaise sauce is actually a reduction uh, of stock, beef stock, flavored with a little shallot, a little garlic that's reduced down with red wine. And uh, it makes a perfect, perfect sauce. Now, the thing with these potatoes, if you do this ahead of time, you can actually, what you can do is, you can, they're already cooked fork tender. So what you can do is you can just crisp them, up, crisp them up a little bit and put those right on the grill. What I'm doing right, right there. 
So you, we've got our potatoes that we cooked a little bit fork tender and then uh, season them and we're putting those on the grill. And then uh, actually we're cooking our little marinated flank steak. Hey, and you can flavor them all kinds of ways. You can, um, you can take some wood chips of hickory or maybe some mesquite and uh, you could soak them and put them on your grill. A very, very simple, simple dinner. Now, what I'm going to do, if you're doing this in house, uh, in the house and not outside on the grill, if you sear your flank steak, if you sear that flank steak, you can also finish it in the oven. And flank steak is not one of those cuts of meat where you want to cook uh, so well done because it has some, uh, some tendons that go along this grain that I'm going to show you. And uh, let me get one. I um, cooked one earlier. I cooked one earlier, and I just want to show you about these grains because it's very important. You see how the flank steak, the grains, come this way here? You see that, the grains? It's one of the things. You want to go against the grain when you're cutting and serving your flank steak. So we're going to serve up a little London broil. Watch what I mean. Here's the grains. You don't, you don't want to go, oh, look at that, perfect. And you kind of want to cut London broil or your flank steak thin and on a bias, just like I am right here. It's a perfect medium rare. Now, if you're taking note about the oven, it was in there after we just seared it, in there no longer than... Um, about 10 to 15 minutes. You just kind of fan them out. I'll serve those with a couple of your crispy potatoes. It's meat and potatoes. Mm. And here's that little Bordelais sauce that I was telling you about, that stock that's reduced with red wine and a little shallot and a little bit of garlic. So simple, but yet so delicious. Flank steak. Look at that, the classic London broil. And right after the break, another delicious way to cook flank steak. Stay with me right here on The Essence of Emerald. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and uh, now I'm going to show you something a little more creative with flank steak. We've fired up that grill and get it really good and hot. And um, some of the things, you know, I showed you the classic London broil. Uh, now I'm going to show you something that you can really have fun with. It makes great little um, hors d'oeuvres, or certainly a great main course. I've got our flank steak, and um, I want to share with you some of these ingredients. I've got some heavy, heavy reduced soy sauce. Or you can use teriyaki sauce, or you could use whatever type of other marinade that you want. I've got some roasted garlic. I just roasted the heads of garlic and popped those little cloves out, roasted nice and sweet. And I've got a little anchovy, because I love anchovy with parsley and a little cheese. And uh, I've got some skewers, because we're actually going to skewer up some of this flank steak. But we're going to uh, just uh, do them little pinwheels, little steak pinwheels, or little flank steak pinwheels. And to do that, I've also got a little bit of uh, just regular bacon, layout bacon. And you notice that the skewers that I have, the wooden skewers, I've been soaking them in some just water. And that's because uh, when you're using wooden skewers, particularly when you're going to grill, either fish or vegetables or these little steak pinwheels. You don't want to soak them so that they don't get all flamed up on the, uh, on the grill. Now, let me show you how simple this dish is. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut. I showed you earlier with uh, the London broil how we cut against uh, with the grain. With these pinwheels, you want to just cut them straight down. Okay? Cut them straight down. 
as thin as you possibly can. Look how beautiful that meat is, huh? Now, once you cut some of your flank steak, the next thing you want to do is we're going to combine some of these some of these ingredients. We're going to combine some of the soy sauce or teriyaki sauce, whatever you have, some of the roasted garlic, and a little bit of the anchovy filet. And we're just going to work those ingredients inside of that soy. And then I like to add lots of fresh parsley. It's almost like a paste. You see that? It's almost like it's a paste. I want to work those ingredients in some, some fresh ground pepper. And then I like to uh, add also a little bit of cheese, a little Parmesan cheese. See that? It's like formed almost like a paste. Now, once we got that together, what we're going to do is we're going to add some cracked pepper right on our flank, pieces of flank. And we're going to add a little bit of salt on our flank. The great thing about this, these steak pinwheels, you can do these ahead of time. As I said earlier, they make great little hors d'oeuvres, great little appetizer, but particularly a wonderful um, entree as well. Now, I want to flatten out, and I can just use the knife. You don't have to use a meat mallet. Just use the back of your knife and flatten these out a little bit. You see how I'm doing that? Magic, right here, the Television Food Network. Just use the back of your knife and flatten them out a little bit. And the reason why is because now what we're going to do is we got this, this paste, this filling. And what I like to do is I like to just sort of work that right inside of the meat. See what I'm, how I'm doing that? I'm just sort of spreading it. And the roasted garlic is just sort of taken right to the meat. Now, I'll show you how simple this is. You take your, take your skewers and your bacon. And take a piece of bacon. What happens is that the bacon not only keeps the meat, you know, there's very little fat on this flank steak. So I'm adding bacon for a couple of reasons, to protect uh, a little bit the meat and also for flavor. The bacon will give it some flavor because there's no fat. And watch how I'm going to do this now. I take a strip of bacon, I take my flank steak there, and then what we do is you sort of roll it and tuck it under. And then you just sort of roll them up. And then you have these very simple, look at that, the little pinwheels. I'll show you another one. We'll take our strip of bacon, and then we'll take our flank steak. And then we'll take it and just roll them up, tuck it under, and then just roll it right up, keeping it really, really good and tight. See, we have a great little pinwheel, and the flavor and filling is right inside there. You can make them smaller. You can cut them in half. You can, they don't have to be this big, but certainly a lot different and a good way to be creative with your flank steak. All right, we're going to roll these up. And the good thing about these is that, as I said earlier, you can just do these ahead of time. Keep them in the refrigerator. You can do them a day before.
and then you would take one of our wooden our skewers. You see the part where the bacon stopped? That's where I like to skewer my little pinwheels. Bring that right down. You want to leave a little space so that the bacon will cook. And then you just right on the grill. Here's some little ones I made earlier. These are little appetizer size. You see that? We cut the bacon in half. When we come back, I'm going to show you more delicious flank steak. We'll check on our pinwheels. Don't go away. Stay with me right here on the Essence of Emerald. Welcome back. Emerald Lagasse here, and thanks for staying with me on The Essence. We're grilling away here, and uh, you see our little pinwheels. You see also what the bacon, you see what the bacon also does is it keeps the flank in there still rare. It doesn't dry it out, as I was saying earlier. And uh, what I want to show you, I want to show you another creative way to use up the flank steak. What you can do is, uh, I'm sure that you've had fajitas and uh, skirt steak, or in this case, flank steak, the two different cuts are used. But if you have some flank steak, they're a great way to skewer them up in another way, too, that you can also marinate them differently. And um, here's some that I've done. You see this? And uh, they're really, really, this is another tasty way uh, for appetizer, uh, little hors d'oeuvres. And uh, how do you make that taste good? other than just uh, salt and pepper. Well, I'm going to show you a quick little, little marinade. First of all, you cut your steak just like I did the pinwheels. You see that? And you cut them up. You can do these ahead of time. Another great, great little hors d'oeuvre. You can skew them up and put them in your little fondue pot. You know, those are coming back, those fondues. Now, inside of a little bowl here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this little marinade. I've got lime juice this time, and um, I've got little uh, Worcestershire sauce, and I've also got some olive oil. And what I did is I took the, uh, the peel of the orange, I've got that peel of the orange and uh, some chopped shallot. Hey, let me tell you something about chopped shallot for a minute. You know, people think that they're going to save some time with using uh, onion in a preparation like this or shallot, and they put it in a food processor, and I don't recommend that because what it does is the blade works it quickly and the water extracts from it instead of all that flavor. So you want to cut it by hand. Take, take an extra minute and cut it by hand. Now. I got a little bit of pepper, and uh, what you can do is make this ahead of time, but the good thing is that you can take these guys, you see that, and just set them in there in your marinade, and then you can just, when you're ready, you season them up. I'm going to use a little bit of that wonderful essence of ours. Woo! Flavor them right up like that, dip them, and we can grill those as well. And they cook really quick because what happens is that you just take the skewer, you see? You take your skewer and you just sort of, about every half inch, every inch or so, you move it down and you just skewer them like that. That simple. Now, I'm going to take our pinwheel. It looks delicious. And I'm going to take our pinwheel right off the skewer. You see that? And I'm going to put one here and one here and one here and here. You can just simply serve that with a little bit of nice greens. You can also skewer them and just put them right over your greens. And what I'd like to finish them up with is just some fresh tomato. Simple. 
chopped with some herbs, with a little olive oil, and look at that, it's so simple. I'll see you tomorrow on The Essence of Emerald. Bye now.